Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And we have a special guest, somebody who's been on the channel several times, a contributor to the course. And as of a couple of days ago, someone who took a book selfie and wrote a five-star review for me on Amazon, Mr. Ryan Nickel. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Michael? I'm doing wonderful, man. So, hey, first off, thank you for doing all of that, uh, taking a selfie with you. What, what kind of machinery were you uh, sitting on? That was, that was impressive. Yeah, thanks. It was a tank. So I actually wanted to get on top of the tank and um, it's at a museum here locally. And they're like, uh, no, I'm like, come on. This is like for my buddy. Like I, I'm going to war. Like I'm, I'm fighting like the real estate battles, you know, they're like, yeah. do it in front, but don't, don't stand on the tank, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We know the tank's supposed to be indestructible, but no, it's no stand Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, fair enough. So yeah, I was in front of the tank. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So, Hey, you sent out a post yesterday on Facebook, because obviously we are Facebook friends with a question basically uh, talking about the seven universal laws, and then you go on to list them. And you basically ask, hey, do you, you know, if, if, if any people are interested in these, you know, would you be interested in doing a free training? And I looked at these going, I don't know what any of these are. So I'm like, dude, I got to talk to you. Let's educate some folks. I don't, worst case, this is going to help me. So uh, why don't you talk about the seven natural laws of the universe? And I'm not sure where this is going to go, but break it down however you'd like. Fair enough. Yeah. You know, when I, I it's so funny because I, I was only going to make that post to my, my meetup uh, group. I'm like, Hey guys, do you want me to do this? And as I was posting it, I remembered, I'm like, Oh crap, we're talking pre foreclosures and tax sales. Cause that's what they wanted. I'm like, yeah. ah, I'll just throw it out in there and see what happens. If anyone has any interest, I'll share it. And yeah. I was like surprised. I'm like, wow. Yeah. You had like, I, I mean, I replied really quick, but you have 39 comments in like eight hours or something. It was like, Whoa, people are interested in this. I know. I was surprised. Honestly, I was, I was like, Oh, okay. I, I guess this is something that people want to know about. So yeah, so these seven laws are, I'll go ahead and, and, and you know, name them out and then we'll go into each, each of them. Um, okay. And for those of you that want to see it, like I, I pull it up on my phone. I don't know if you can see that or not for the video. Yep. Yeah. So um, it's the law of mentalism, the law of correspondence. That's number two, the mm -hmm. law of vibration, mm -hmm. the law of polarity, mm -hmm. the law of rhythm, the law of cause and effect and the law of gender. Now, as we go through these, you'll probably be like, oh, yeah, I know that. I've heard that. Or maybe you've like, heard it in a different term. Uh, most people hear like, oh, the law of attraction. I know this law. Yeah. And, and you'll see how that works yeah. in this. Yeah. Well, the, the whole key I want to go through this is, like most things, people may go, I get it. But I'd love for you to, because you you're very clear that the, this is intentional for you. And you can, you can layer in stories of how it affects your daily life, your business, your family. That's what that's. That's the connection I think people need to see because understanding it's only one part of this puzzle, right? You have, application to, have to make huge. action or application. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, let's have some fun with it. Where do you want to go first? Let's start with the law of mentalism because that's the first okay. one. All right. So, so law of mental is, mentalism is basically that everything is mental. Mm. Everything is mental. And what I mean by that, like, not mental, like, oh, that's crazy. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. You're like, everything's feels, mental. Yeah, it feels that it feels that way sometimes. If, sure if you watch like, the media. <laughs> yeah, right. Like everything is just going nuts. But what it means is that like this whole entire experience that we're we're experiencing is a mental experience. What it, what it means basically is that the mind of the creator is what's projecting this stuff that we're living inside someone like the matrix, basically. Yeah. It's a, it's a video game, if you will, or exactly. Or... Yeah. It's a video game that, that we're just doing this, but here's the crazy thing about it is that everything is mental. It's not just like, okay, that's a great concept or it's a great construct to live in. But when you look at life in general, that you can say, look, everything exists mentally before it becomes a physical reality, right? Nothing right. that we have that you see was ever created until it was first a mental thought. Yeah, this this is this is kind of a la Jim Rome. Is that am I saying is that the right guy I'm thinking of who it talked could, about kind oh, of seeing a it? lot of these, yeah. Yeah, okay. I like you're, this. you're gonna hear a lot of this stuff. Like if you've read like Jim Rohn, if you've read Think and Grow Rich, like yeah. Napoleon Hill, a lot of these yep. universal laws, um they they've been handed down like they've been handed down and they, they transcend send time you know they're, they're universal principles um yeah I, and what i gotta say i just want i'm gonna have a real conversation a lot of people hear these and they they again they understand but they also write them off mm -hmm. i know a lot of tremendous real estate investors and a lot of them saw what they were going to be before they were that thing 100%. and it's amazing how powerful this is um, I mean, just talk about your journey from going from 200 to 150 in your weight recently. You saw that, I'm yeah. sure, before it started happening, right? No, that, that's exactly right. So 
<laughs> so I hired my coach just to be you know, a little tangent on this. So I hired my yeah. coach. He's like, Hey man, you know, what do you want to do? Like, how do you want to do this? And I'm like, you know, I want, um, and at the time I was like 195, 196. And I'm like, you know, I, I would, I, I would be the, it would mean the world to me if I could be the weight on my license. He's like, yeah, what is it? I'm like 185. <laughs> 11 pounds <laughs> 11 pounds yeah he's like 185 and he was brilliant he goes okay he's like you know i i think if we work hard enough we can make that happen and no he knowing exactly like his, his stuff like works and i think within like two weeks i was boom, already past that he's like well shoot man we already hit that let's just keep going and see what happens <laughs> and he knew like what was going to happen yeah but for me like if he would have come out and said hey man i think you can get down to 150 i would have been like <laughs> no way no yeah exactly because what i was carrying in my mind oh, wouldn't have interesting. worked we, love we shut off ideas and we shut off things so so often that come to us because we can't see it happening or happening to us yeah and i, I it, love that and that goes right into the law of correspondence okay and so the law of correspondence says is that um as it is within so it is without okay or as it is above so it is below like this is right. what it says like it's like everything's a mirror right okay and I'm sure you've heard the book, uh, as a man thinketh. Mm -hmm. So what, um, what that book talks about is that you know, there's a phrase in that book that says that, you know, uh, many, many people think that it's the circumstance that make the man. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, the man makes the circumstance. He's like, you show me the circumstance and I'll show you who the man is already. Wow. And what happens is we're creating this. And so you talk about like real estate investing, like, First, you're right. We have to see this idea mm -hmm. of what we can achieve. And then if we can see it happening, we're going to start to build a mental construct inside ourselves. And then what we ever, whatever images we're holding inside our minds, mm -hmm. we're going to now project that outside to us. Yeah, I, this, this is one I am not particularly good at when this, you know, the, the law of mentalism, I get that. I, I, I believe in that this law of correspondence is not something I've practiced, thought about, given much attention to. So again, it, it applies to not only real estate, but entrepreneurship, family, mm -hmm. health. Um, yeah, let's talk about this one some more, because this is right, you know, already in the number two, and it's a weakness of mine. Right, right. Well, you know, it's interesting because you said something that um, in one of your posts the other day, or maybe it was on one of your videos. And I was like, no, <laughs> no, that can't be right. You said something about like, I only see what's directly in front of me. I don't see long term vision. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, you know, that, that is a, I call it a super strength, but it also, anytime you have a strength that that's bias, it also is a weakness, right? Like Achilles right. heel. Right. But yeah, I, I can get on, a, I, I call myself a hammer, right. You know, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, and I'm excited about the next nail. I don't know what it is. I don't care if it's a thousand nails or a million nails. I'm excited by the next nail, but I have no idea how long the line is. I have no, it's, it's just weird inside my head. No, it's totally fine though. Cause <laughs> Well, and here's the thing, though, you know, there are. Um, so, for example, you see yourself as the doer. Yeah, I'm going to go and I'm going to do. And everyone needs that in a business, you know, the, the implementer, the, the mm -hmm. executioner, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever you it is. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look at most of like the most iconic companies that have been in the world today. So you have Apple, mm -hmm. you have you know, Microsoft. You know, those are two easy examples. You had a doer and you had a visionary. And when they're paired together, their strengths and their weaknesses, they complement each other and are able to go, you know, synergetically and just crush it. I mean, you right. have Bill Gates, the ultimate salesman, can sell mm -hmm. anything. He can sell, well, I don't want to say certain words because you may get your dealer yeah. platform here. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, you had him and then you had, you know, um, his Palmer. partner. Was it Michael Allen? Is that his name? Oh, Balmer, right? No. Oh, yeah, Allen. Yeah, Allen. The yeah. Allen passed I mean, away, yeah. And he was the, and then you also have, you know, Wazinski and, and, and Jobs. These both, these brilliant men, but in their own right. So, right. I mean, to your credit, look what you've built by doing the work every single yeah. day. <laughs> yeah, just do the work, man. That's all I know. That's right. <laughs> That's my phrase, do the work. <laughs> but here, but so you think about that though. So how does it go into like correspondence though? It's like, yeah. okay, so, you know, inside you see yourself as like this, this doer, this hammer that's going to be doing this stuff. And so you create this reality outside you as well that requires you to work in that function mm -hmm. based yeah. on what you're, what you're thinking. No, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, so, Go ahead. So, so the, but the, to piggyback on this one, so you have this law of correspondence. So first you think mentally, mm -hmm. then like, you know, as you are inside, so it is outside. Okay. And this is where people get like really, really messed up. This next one is this law of vibration. Yeah. 
and it flows into this. So what happens is the law of vibration basically is that everything is in motion. Nothing rests. Nothing. Right. So like, for example, you know, uh, everything you see, it may like appear solid. It's actually not. At the smallest micronic, you know, you know, level, things are still moving. Atoms and protons are, you know, they're, 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 they're moving around there. You get the, the, the protons, the electrons going around, uh, or actually electrons going around the, the nucleus there, but it's always moving. It's never like something that's, that's completely um, still. Okay. And you can see this and you're like, okay, this is, this is fascinating. When you look at the world, it's never stand still, which means you too are always in, in direction one way or another. You're either going towards creation or you're going towards destruction or, okay. you know, entropy. Mm -hmm. some kind of, of break. So, so the world's always in motion. Yeah. And so when you think about that, you're like, okay, well, if the image that I have inside me doesn't create any kind of energy for me to move in that direction, I'm not going to get the desired results. Mm. And this is where real estate investors really kind of fall short. They're like, oh man, you know, um, so the whole idea, like, well, if I can think about it, then I can, I can go ahead and I can get it, but that's only half the equation. You have to think it to be it but in order to be it you're then going to go and do and then when you do you have what it is that they want ah. let me give you an example here okay so it doesn't sound like you no know, so like esoteric way up in the clouds thank you yes i mean not for you but yeah no no it's, it is for me <laughs> so for example and this is where people get screwed up all the time is okay let's say i'm, I'm, I'm a brand new investor and i'm and, and my goal is i want to have four cash flow properties there All right, go. fair enough. So that's fair so my goal is, is for cash flow properties. I'm seeing it. Now, what does that look like to me? I'm like, okay, for cash flow properties, I now know what I'm going to do with that, that, that money. I'm going to be going and, and taking my family on a vacation or something like that. Okay. Fair enough. So I think about that and I'm like, okay, who do I need to be in order to have four cash flow properties? Oh, I need to be an investor. Now, I didn't plan to wear this today. This is not my normal getup. I actually had a meeting prior to this. And so I dressed up for the meeting and, <laughs> and, and voila, <laughs> very good. <laughs> Here we are. However, so if I, let's say that I thought like, okay, you know, I seen a couple of real estate investors in my RIA, they show up, they got these really nice, um, you know, they all have, let's say they all have Rolexes, you know, I need to go and I need to buy myself a Rolex because that's what they do. Mm. And so it's this whole kind of like fake it till you make it. Okay. And so what happens is, you know, this thing like, okay, who do I need to be? I need to be the guy with the Rolex. And so they go out and they buy this Rolex and then they don't understand quite like, okay, what are they doing mm -hmm. to get what they have? They just see the guy that has the Rolex. And so uh, what happens, they skipped a step or steps. Yes. But then also what happens though is, um, and you may have heard this story or this analogy, like, you know, use car salesman. He's like, he hires a new, a new employee. He's like, great, here we go. You know what? In order for you to make your quota, I want you to buy this Cadillac. And you're putting this pressure on this, on this yeah. person. So they have to like now meet their quota because now they have this huge debt. Well, you, you think that's a used car salesman. Do I worked in the software industry for two decades? That yeah. is a thing. You celebrated as a manager when your salesperson bought a seven series BMW because exactly. the pressure just goes, because that's, that's, that's a 15, $1,800 payment plus insurance and blah, 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 blah. Oh, we, that was a thing. We did that. Yeah. <laughs> And, and we still do that. And we'll go out and we'll like, well, you know, you talk a lot about this on your channel about, you know, buying things over time. Yeah. You know, if you can't afford it twice, then don't buy it, you know? That is, yeah. The, yeah. That I forget what it's called now in the moment, but yeah, the buy now, pay later thing. Yeah, oh, buy now, pay later. So, I mean, oh, it's crazy. I, I have my Apple, my Apple, um, uh, card come on, came on and said, Hey, guess what? You have a line increase. I'm like, Oh, that's great. It's all, guess what? You can buy the new MacBook on payments. And this is what the payments would be monthly. I'm like, I need a new Mac. <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to pay 200% for it. Exactly. Yeah. But so here's the thing though. Let's say they went out and they got this. So this investor, they go out there, they don't have the 10 grand to go buy a Rolex. So they put it on their credit card or even worse. You know what? You know, not even that. Let's say that they, they buy some course. that's like 10 grand. Yeah. And now they're in the hole. And so here's what happens. And this is where it starts to go against them. So you and how it can go against you all right so the first example is how it goes against you so let's say okay i want to be this investor i want these four properties mm -hmm. i'm going to go buy this guy's course it's going to cost me 10 grand i'm going to put on my credit card and now every morning when i wake up i'm going to feel that burden that fear that debt and now my vibration yeah my energy is more of fear 
than a faith and confidence. And so every time I feel this fear, I'm taking a step further and further and further back yeah. from, let me turn that off. No problem. From, from where I want to go and I'm moving the wrong direction. Oh, you're so right. Cause every time, again, I, these are real world examples, right? We yeah. would celebrate that sales rep buying that seven series. And the ratio was about eight to two. So eight out of 10 people went backwards and they were, they were gone in six to nine months. They missed quota. They, their life just gets wrecked. Everything breaks. Yeah. And then there were two people out of 10 that for whatever reason, they thrived with the pressure. Some people are wired that way. True. Most aren't. Most go backwards. So how does this work for the person that wants to be that person? So yeah. here's how this works is, okay, everything is mentally. You first created the idea of what you want. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Okay. And so you start to internalize that. Okay, who do I need to be? Mm -hmm. And you recognize, okay, I need that. I need to be this person. And as you start to think about yourself as this person, so instead of thinking about the debt that's crushing you, you think about, okay, I'm going to think about this person that I want to be. Going back to my weight challenge. Challenge. Yeah. I mentally had a vision of what I wanted to look like, and I, you know, some people will go out and they'll get vision boards and stuff like that. So I had several pictures of people that had like six pack abs because that's what my goal was. Okay. Once I passed that 185 and I was like on the downward slope, I'm like, let's take this all the way to six pack, shall we? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah, we're going to do this. I, I mentally, I had to hold an image in my mind because there were days where I'm like, oh, it's my wife's birthday. Let's get some cake. Let's do this and, and have all these things. But that image was kept, kept bringing me back to like, no. And I would feel the feeling of what it would feel like to be finally like taking a selfie or doing a photo shoot and be like, yeah, I got this. And that yeah. was the, the vibrational energy that I was going towards. And that was what pulled me or yeah. propelled me in that, in that direction of faith and confidence. Right. And so as, as real estate investors, we're thinking about this goal that we want to have. We have to think about what it's going to feel like when we have achieved it rather than feeling like, oh, crap, I just like crushed myself with this debt, this problem yeah. that we're trying to get away from which is why they actually wanted to get the, you know, four investment properties in the first place is to get out of debt, not to get more in, into debt. Yeah. Oh, I love this. This is very helpful. Okay. So that was the law of vibration. Yes. Yeah, so that's law of vibration. Um, so the law of polarity, basically the law of polarity is that everything has its polar opposite. Mm. So this is, um, this is, this, this can be controversial. <laughs> Uh, so some people say, you know, there's, there's, there's these two diametrically opposed energy sources in the universe. Okay. They want to, you know, call it God, call it the devil, you know, whatever you want to you label it. Um, one's good, one's bad. Okay. Good and, and, and bad. they're fighting each other and they're fighting each other and they're, and they're, they're trying to get your soul or trying to, you know, whatever. And if you believe that, that there's these two energy forces contending, mm -hmm. then you're screwed because really? now you're not in control anymore. Ah, you've given up control. To some outside entity that has complete control over you and you no longer are at choice. Which no free will. No free will. You're, we're going to talk about cause and effect. You're no longer a cause for your life, your actions. It's just you're existing. You're just you bouncing are, through the universe. That's right. You're being a ping pong back and forth. Ooh, okay. So here's yeah. what the law of polarity says is like, no, it's one. Everything is one. There's one energy, just two different forms or two different poles. Okay. Complete opposite. Got it. And so... Like there is cold, there is hot. Right. Like there is poor, there is rich. Got it. And so, okay. and here's the thing, like, you know, if you talk about like speed, for example, um, I want to go get my, I want to go buy my first investment property and you have the spectrum of like slow and fast. Where's the difference between slow and fast? Yeah. Yeah what's, you know? yeah. what's slow for me, maybe fast for you or. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, I might, you know, go and analyze a deal and it takes me 120 days and you're like 120 days i bought four already yeah i'm done yeah, yeah thanks where, i'm done <laughs> where have you been you know and and that's the whole thing and then when you realize that it's that that it's just a a, a polar like a spectrum of right. where you're at on the spectrum it's no longer these two forces coming down and fighting against you like oh no i'm gonna get you over here no i'm gonna get you over here oh, i like it okay you just realize i'm going at my own pace and i'm going in the direction that i need to go that i want to go yeah and, and hot or cold neither is good or bad it's just it is it, it is it is it is what you call it yeah i like that okay all right see you, you label that and so um I mean, and again what i may call hot you may call cold exactly so I, I had a coach one time and I was hired, I hired him and I was paying hundred dollars a month wow. and it okay. was a stretch to pay him a hundred dollars. I was like skipping meals. I mean, I was doing everything I could. And he asked me one time, he's like, Greg, you know how much I charge normally? I'm like, I don't know. 
hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Seventy. Yeah. Ten thousand dollars. Oh wow. And I'm like, why are you doing this? Yeah. For one, and then two, I'm like, nah, bogus, man. No one pay yeah. ten thousand dollars. He was a referral from a buddy of mine who just said, "Hey, man, this guy's having a hard time. Just do me a favor. Do you know? Do, do me a solid. solid. Yeah. Exactly. I had no idea. Wow. And the reason why he brought that up, he's like, because my goals were so small, because I only wanted to make like an extra like three or four hundred dollars a month. And he's like, he's like, what you what you consider to be a huge surmount, you know, almost insurmountable task. Because I had a day job at the time and stuff like that. You know, make an extra three hundred dollars a month. He's like. People sneezed and that money's gone, you know? Yeah. I mean, especially now with Amazon, I can't tell you my bills. Like, yes. Like, yeah. I got, oh, great. More cardboard. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But it's like, it's crazy because like on the spectrum of where we're at, it's never, you know, when we want to come start comparing ourselves to other people, mm. we're allowing that split to happen instead of realizing we're all on the same journey going at different pace. Oh, I like that. Okay. And it allows us to deal with people differently. For sure. So, yeah. I mean- You'll, you'll run into different individuals. This is, this is along the same lines, but a, a different application. Uh -huh. There are individuals that are called polar responders that no matter how you respond, they're always going to take the contrarian approach. Yeah. Oh yeah. I got family like that. They just do that. And so when you recognize that, you're like, oh, like after like two or three um, you know, comments and they're taking the opposite stance, you're oh, okay. If I want them to go this direction, I'm just going to go over here and they're going to be repelled this way. <laughs> so you play their game. Oh yeah. So I mean, so for, true. It is. So for example, like I had a seller one time and it, it, it just, it was, I was getting so frustrated with him. I'm like, so we can close, like, you know, we, we can, we can close this transaction, like, you know, in three days, we can do it all cash closed in three days, like three days. Oh man, no. I, and so he's looking around to find all the reasons why he can't do it in three days. I got to pack all this stuff up. So finally, like out, out of frustration, this is when I discovered it out of frustration. I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm not going to buy your house. And if I did, I probably wouldn't close. And I, and I shot out like way, it's like in February, I like shot some holiday way in the end of the year. I'm like, you know what? Even if I were going to, I wouldn't close on it until at least maybe, I don't know, Thanksgiving. And he came back. He's like, ah, that's way too far. <laughs> way too far in the future, man. I need you to do something like, can you help me out? Like maybe after Easter in April. And I'm like, oh, heck. Oh, that way. Whoa. <laughs> that's like 45 days. Yeah, we can do that. No problem. Oh, man. But it was out of frustration that I learned this. I'm like, this guy's a polar responder. Nice. So I, okay. went, I, went, I went further than I knew he would go and he would repel back the opposite direction. Oh, that's cool. Okay. All right. I like that. Again, so, I'm glad I've asked you to do this because this, this is, uh, I am learning a lot. So I appreciate the examples. Thank you. Uh, you're very welcome. All right. So the next one here that I have, I'm just going in, in order of the list that was on yep. the app. Um, rhythm. Rhythm. Law of rhythm. You know, I, so you'll appreciate this one so the law of rhythm is that everything has its cycle yeah so tide comes in tide comes out okay. you have the, these four seasons they they come and they go um we we're, we're born we get we grow up we die you know mm -hmm. there's all these cycles to it business cycles and i think this is where um the work that you do daily comes into play more than i think anywhere else is doing the daily work of knowing your numbers, knowing your market. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for example, this is, this is the reason why. Your students are gonna have such an advantage over anyone else that's not paying attention to the market daily because by the time your students pick up three or four deals and they know that they're phenomenal deals because the market has shifted in their direction yeah. because they've been doing the work and they can learn to recognize it, they see the rhythm happening, they've already capitalized and then everyone else jumps on the bandwagon and they're like, Sorry guys, it's already starting to go the other way. <laughs> yeah, no, that is. Uh, I'm already seeing that. That and nothing makes me happier than somebody sending an email or a post or whatever saying just that. Right, doing the work. You do. It is a rhythm. It is. It. it there's a flow of. I don't know seasons to use your yeah. word. And you know we're in the real estate slowdown, not a crash. Stop saying crash. It's not a crash. Right. But there right. is a slowdown, and when there is a slowdown, you can find the one motivated seller. The hardest person to find in 2020 was a motivated seller because you could throw junk and it would sell. Oh. Guess what? That time is not now. Right. So you use this. I call the deal of the deck. I've done most years, the deal of the decade between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, because there's this thing called a tax year. And sometimes you can find that seller who tries to hide 
that is motivated by time, not price. Exactly. And you're just in it. You see it. You don't, half the time, I don't even know I've recognized it. It's like some subtle thing. And it's like, how did I know that that was the one seller out of a thousand? That would, it's just weird when you watch every day. It is. It's almost magical. It is. It's like, I had, I don't know why that one caught my attention. It just did. That's why I tell them to build a spreadsheet. I tell them it takes 45, 60. It, and then when, because at someday there will be this light bulb that goes on. It goes, I see it now. It's, it, it is, Matt. It's, it's so powerful. It's well, awesome. Let's go back to the law of correspondence. So for example, you know, if you think of your mind as this great computer search engine, and so if you go like, if you pull up Google and you type in Google and you type in, um, you know, poverty, Google is going to give you all these images and, res and resources and everything that has to do with poverty. It's going to exclude wealth and abundance yes. because you only ask specifically for that. So, but if you go and say, okay, I want to look for, you know, abundance or wealth, your brain is going to focus in and only going to see those yeah. specific examples. So as you're doing this work internally, it has to reflect externally. So if you're doing the work and you're looking for that super deal, the deal of the decade, yeah, it's going to, you're going to see it. Yeah. That's exactly what I tell people, right? Do the work. I when I tell them to do the work and I didn't even know I was doing this, it was just how I operated for 20 years. Yeah. Do like the course, the course is not about finding good or great deals. The course is about understanding average mm. because once you know, average good or great stand out like a sore thumb, it's just, right. it's, it's wow. That's cool. Okay. Awesome. So didn't I, even know I was doing that. No. Yeah. Yeah. So these <laughs> things are, that's why they're natural laws is you don't have to be taught on. You just do them naturally. So cool. Sometimes they're unconscious. Sometimes they are conscious, you know, it just, and here's the beautiful thing about it is once you're aware of it, you're like, oh, I can make this part of my daily conscious practice every yes. single day. I like that. Okay. Oh, cool. All right. So uh, law of cause and effect. I think most of us have heard this in one form or another, um, but basically- it's, I got I to gotta tell you, this is the one of the seven that I'm like, I might know that one. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Let's hear it. What do you think it is? No. Well, again, it's like every action has a reaction. That's exactly what right. it is. Yeah. Hey, I got one of seven. You got it, man. That's genius. <laughs> yeah. Woohoo! My call, so, my my advanced degree paid off. <laughs> yes. There, to every action, there is an there's another action. Now, Newton call it like the, to every action is an equal and opposite reaction. Um, that's not necessarily is the case, but to every to every to every effect, there is a cause. Basically, yes. is, is what it is. Oh, I like the flip of that. Yeah. For every effect, there is a cause. I like that. And so here's what happens is. And this is where you see this, the victimhood will come into play mm -hmm. is people be like, oh, my market's not, people aren't buying those in my market, or I can't get the seller to return my phone call. Now, what's happening here is you're now on the side of effect and not on the side of cause. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, you got to go back and reverse engineer this stuff. So when I talk to my coaching students, I'm like, hey, man, how many closings did you have this? Or actually not closing. How much money did you make? Mm. Oh, and if someone goes, hey, I didn't make any money this month. I'd be like, well, okay, let's talk about this. How many closings did you have? Um, I didn't have any closings. All right. That's cool. How many contracts did you have? I, I didn't have any contracts. Yeah. Okay. How many appointments did you go on? or how many offers did you make? I made no offers. Okay. How many appointments did you go on? No appointments. How many contacts? How many yeah. calls are you making? How many people's doors are you knocking on? Like what's happening here? And you can go all the way back to the cause. You're okay. So you, you didn't close. You didn't make any money. You yeah. didn't close. You didn't make any, you didn't get any contracts. You didn't make any offers. You didn't go on any appointments and you're not contacting people. Well, shoot, what's the cost? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't Let me know. break this down for you. Yeah. yeah. Your, your market's bad. That's what the answer is. That's it. The cause of my market's bad or, or these leads suck. Yeah. That's oh, always the thing. Oh, yeah, I got these sucky leads, man. These leads are no good. And I'm like, give me those leads. I'll go and like call three or four of them and get a deal. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like the cause is you, you are the cause. That's amazing. Okay. And, and when you can actually like put it back squarely on somebody's shoulders and they can realize, shoot, I am at cause. Now you start to go back and you start to see here like, oh, okay. If I go back to the law of vibration, you know, if I'm not feeling the way that I need to feel in order to go out and be the person that I want to be, it's because I'm not doing the things that those people do. And if I'm not doing those, I can't be that person. Mm -hmm. They go hand in hand. Who I am is who I, is what I do. And if what I do doesn't mirror up with what I, with who I, who I say I want to be, then I have a disconnect and I'm going the opposite direction. Yeah. And so that's why it's so important to find a mentor Yeah. or, or someone that can say, Hey, this is the step-by-step -step, paint by numbers. This is what you got to do in order to get to where you want to go. Yeah. That's exactly what I, when I sat down to create this course, which I never thought I would create, right. It's only created. Cause I wrote, I wrote a book 
the book was so well attended to that I had to create a course to feed the hungry, you know, how'd you do it? How'd you do it? How'd you do it? Yeah, no, and I, I mean, you just you don't have all the time in the world, and it's, your yeah. course is brilliant. It's broken down specifically. Hey, this is what you do, and then for those, you know, items that weren't covered in your course, you got your nine millionaires. Yeah, you every yes. week, man. Yeah, dude, I yeah, I uh, there's no excuse. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I I'm very disciplined. So if I don't know something, I go find someone that does, like you, creative financing. I don't know. Right. I've never done. One. I will not talk about stuff I haven't done, but I know people that have, and then they like what we're doing here. And then they create a bonus content. You put in three hours and bonus. It's just amazing stuff people will do. So thank you for doing that again. It's always my pleasure. Yes. I, and I hope you, that your students are getting great. Value. Oh, they have great feedback. Yes. Oh, good. So that's, you know, cause and effect. You're always a cause at your effects mm. and where we have our challenge and our problems. And we realize that we're the effect because here's what happens. If you are not at the cause of, of your effects, then you are the effect of someone else's cause. Say that again. So if you're not, if you're not the cause, basically, if you're not creating your life, the Got effects it. in your life, yeah. you are the effect of someone, someone else's else. cause. Oh, wow. You, you know, you're somebody else's um, yeah. <laughs> puppet. Puppet, yeah. There yeah, you go. keep it clean here. There you go. Yeah, you're, someone else is, 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 is controlling and, and working yeah. your life. And here's the deal, right? And this, um, this actually might be going on right now, but generational, right? My generation... <laughs> Um, we were taught go to school, get a good job, you know, make a lot of money, right? That's yeah. kind of we were at the we were the effect of somebody else's cause. Like, hey, we're going to work for this company for twenty years, get the gold watch, whatever. This generation, I mean, just this time, maybe it's because of the pandemic. Well, who knows? But I think it was four point three million people quit in August. We had record entrepreneurships. Maybe more and more people are seeing this and taking over and doing side hustles. And hey, I could drive for Uber or whatever four day, four hours a day and pay my bills. Right. Maybe we have generational changes. I don't know. It's interesting. You know, it, it, it's, it is. And, and as you mentioned on your channel as well, you know, college enrollments are down as yeah, well. Yeah, 6%. Yeah. It's Significantly. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So where I'm at, I'm, I'm up here in um in Northern California. We got like, like a kind of a, I, I say this lovingly, we have like a hippie population up here in Grass Valley um, area. And um, it's beautiful. So I'll go to the river. I'll hang out with these people. And this past summer alone, I've seen people from all over the world in that millennial age where they're like, you know, 21 to 30. Okay. I mean, maybe that's not even millennial. I mean, I don't know what those are. I mean, edge like, of Gen Z, right? So I think Gen Z is like 23 or 24 is the upper end right now. Okay. But yeah. So, I mean, but here's the cool thing about them. They're not from America. Yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. They're like okay. from Switzerland and Argentina. They're from all over the world. And there was a couple of guys that I saw that are, they're just like kind of nomadic, you know, they're yeah. just like just traveling. I'm like, I'm like, dude, like, what are you doing for like money? And all this stuff. He's like, dude. And it's so funny. Like, man, God's got me or the universe got me. I just land on my feet wherever I go. There's always something to do. And I'm like, how do you like, and I'm trying to like understand like their thought process. Like, how do you do this? He's like, I just know that I'm going to go and it's always going to be there. And I'm like, dude, like that's some serious faith. Yeah, I was not raised to have that. <laughs> my, my personal experience is not that. <laughs> no, exactly. Like we experience this from our moms and our dads. And, and this is what happens. You know, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. So, um, you know, our, our first, you know, years from like, you know, zero to eight is we're a sponge. We're absorbing everything around us. We have no real like conscious thought as far as like, you know, consequences. Like our conscious mind, they say, is, as far as psychology goes, is not de developed until like our seven or eight year old, um, until we're seven or eight. Okay. And so until this time, all everything's subconscious and everything's just getting in and it's, and it's programming us. It's, it's creating our beliefs and our values and all this structure in our life. And so um, I don't know about you, but for me, I, we grew up very poor. Like my mom oh. was in garage sales. My dad oh, was yeah. like, you know, working two jobs and his dad worked two jobs. And here's the crazy thing that happened is when I told my dad, I wanted to be an entrepreneur because I wanted to make more money. I want to have freedom. His response was, well, that's your burden, son. If you do that, that's your cross to bear because mm -hmm. I worked two jobs my entire life and I'm an honest man and I don't know any honest person that doesn't work two jobs. And so if you're working less than two jobs and you have extra money, you must be a criminal. Ooh. And I'm like, so this is like the thought process that I have. I'm like, Oh man, if I get extra money, I'm a criminal. I'm, crim I'm, I'm doing something dishonest. And so I'm constantly like thinking about myself, my self image. I'm like, I'm a thief. I'm probably going to jail. I'm going to be in handcuffs. I look, I look bad in orange. <laughs> 
orange is the new black, man. Yeah. <laughs> so all these like things were horrible in my mind. And so I had to go through and deconstruct that. But it wasn't until I came across these laws that I was able to realize what was actually happening inside my mind so I could change this. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, so how do you change that? Well, that comes to the law of gender. Okay. So this is the beautiful thing about it's everything has its male and female component. It's yin and it's yang. Okay. And I'm like, okay, so what does this actually mean? So um, for example, the human brain has a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere, has mm -hmm. a logical side and an emotional side, has a masculine side and a feminine side. Okay. And so here's, here's a crazy thing about it is the, you know, you may have like in your business career, talked to individuals like, oh, that person has real masculine energy or they have real feminine energy, whether it's male or female, biologically doesn't matter. They yeah. can exhibit either, either trait. Sure. And the truth of the truth of the matter is, is we we have both of those energies within us, mm -hmm. and so everything is it's like male and female, you know, plants and trees and all of those things, and so when we talk about like you know, um, like the logical side is the masculine side of of our of our thinking process, and the emotional side, the empathetic side, is the female side, the, the nurture, the care, given mm -hmm. side, and here's a, or the creative side as well. So here's a crazy thing about real estate investors is most jobs require you to be either one or another. Like if you're going to go into like a compassionate field, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a caregiver, you're going to have that empathetic uh, role, you're even teachers. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be an accountant, you're going to be very analytical, you know, you're going to use that, that left side of your brain. Mm -hmm. Real estate investors, we're, we got the best of both worlds here. We're very analytical when it comes to numbers. The numbers have to work. Absolutely. Yeah. And then we have to be creative of how we're going to dispo this property. Am I going to, you know, for me, creative financing, what creative solution can I come up with? Or if I'm going to be flipping it, I got to go through and I got to create the, the interior in my mind of what it's going to look like and, and, and become very creative as far as like what we're going to do as far as construction goes. Yeah. And, you know, real estate investors are the one where like you're both. You're both masculine and feminine. You're both wow. logical and, and creative. Interesting. Okay. So, but here's how it all ties together is, and this is, this is, this is, this is so genius of how this, this, this just comes together is you have to, when you think masculine and feminine, you have, you have the masculine who impregnates, impregnates the feminine. Okay. So how do you do that? So our minds, we have a conscious mind, the logical mind that we can think what it is that we want. And then we have the unconscious mind. So we can impregnate that unconscious mind. So basically all those thoughts and those values that we uh, had grown up with, that we, we, we took on as personifications when we were younger, we can change those. And the most you know, common way is people will, will create affirmations. Right. And so they'll go around, they'll say these mantras are like, I am smart. I am beautiful. I am healthy. I am skinny or whatever, whatever it is they want. I'm wealthy. I'm, I own four, you know, cash flowing, you know, real estate property, you know, whatever it, it may be. If you say it enough times, you're going to impregnate that unconscious mind. And then we go back to this loop here where it becomes all mental. Wow. And then you go back to correspondence as you start to believe it and to feel it, you create that vibration, that energy. And now you're starting to attract that into your life. You're starting to see those opportunities. You recognize the rhythm. You're now at cause and you can just go through all of these laws over. And it becomes this like cycle of just mm. becoming from where you're at, growing up into these evolutions of becoming, you know, greater and greater being of who you are. That's amazing. I am so glad I asked you to do this last night. Thank you for doing this on such short notice. If, um, if folks wanted to follow you, maybe get a part of this uh, training you may be putting together, I'm going to guess you're going to create it given all the feedback you've seen. I don't know. I think this video is enough. We'll just, ah, to your, just your send your channel here. <laughs> um, I, th I think there's something there. Uh, where, how do you want people to follow you? Reach out if they want to maybe get some coaching or whatnot. How do you want that to happen? You know, um, my, my handle is bootstraprei at Gmail. I mean, that's my email actually, but my handle is, is, is bootstraprei. Um, I think that's still my handle. Or maybe I'm trouble selling your house. I don't even know. I think you're trouble selling your house now. I did I change it. Yeah, it's trouble selling your house. Yeah. And again, folks, if you want to know, he's in my course, the bonus section, creative financing. He reached out and said, I want to help add to this. And he did. It's amazing stuff. You hear some personal stories in there in the beginning. So. Uh, Ryan, you've got a great story. And again, clearly, um, I learned a lot this morning. So uh, like I said, I only knew one of those in, in all honesty. So um, well, there you go, man. So thank you very much. Thanks for all your success. And congrats on, uh, on you, you, you attacked one of my workouts. I just want to work this <laughs> in here. So folks, one of the things that I do every day is I try to, I try to do something that physically challenges me. And the other day in California, it was raining really bad. 
So uh, I did something that I called test your inner bitch. I didn't, you know, that's just what I called it. And it was a 50, 40, 30, 20, 10 exercise of burpees, which everybody hates and calorie rows. I did it in about 28 minutes, a little bit over 28. Ryan takes the challenges and crushes it in like 22 something. It was 23. Yeah. 23. I need to go do that again because <laughs> I'm competitive, <laughs> but congratulations. You look amazing. Drop roughly 50 pounds. Uh, your success in business family. Uh, it's, uh, it's amazing to watch. So thank you again. My pleasure. I appreciate you having me on. Yep.